Hello class, this is the second lecture of chapter two. We are talking about types of functions. And the first thing I want to do, this is just to show you what a strange guy I am, is I would like for you to uh, check out this video. Uh, there is a video right there that should be clickable. It's a weird looking video. You're going to say what's going on. It should open in a separate window. So click on it, watch the music video, and then come back here when it's done. All right, we are back. You have watched the video and you are saying what is going on and I'm going to tell you this is a lecture about parent functions and what are parent functions? Parent functions are the original, uh, in this case, seven functions that we need to learn that we are going to remix like a DJ. So that video that we just watched was a remix of the old movie Alice in Wonderland and he knew that movie so well that he could grab sections of it that didn't even have words in them that just had somebody speaking a note and then string that together in a way not dependent on the words that just made it still be a great song despite having only samples from the movie. He knew it that well and so what Long term, the goal is for you to know these seven parent functions so well that when you need to model something in the natural world, you've got a vocabulary, a set of uh, old school songs that you can remix uh, to fit your needs to describe some phenomenon. So what are these uh, seven functions? Well, first of all, we've got what you've been used to now since Algebra 1 of just basic lines. Y equals MX plus B. Here are some samples of some basic uh, kinds of lines. You've also got a fair bit of experience with polynomials. These are things that you've been used to now for a couple years. You've been seeing them maybe not much beyond X squared, but you've started to get the hang about uh, how they work. We've also got rational functions, which are very much related to uh, polynomials. They have these weird asymptotes, and they behave a lot more strangely, but it's not that much harder math. What this year is mostly going to be about, a lot of things this year are going to be about periodic functions. So you've not had a lot to do with sine and cosine and tangent yet, uh, but we will be doing that a lot this year. Uh, Exponential functions, uh, where x is in the exponent, that's something you should have seen in the past and should be somewhat used to, or at least how to put it in the calculator, will build on that. Um, roots, either square roots, or cube roots, or fourth roots, fifth roots, again, something that you should just have maybe a calculator knowledge of, but we'll build on that and get uh, more used to those. And the last major category is logs. Whether it's natural logs, log base 10, or some other kind of log, you should be fairly uh, familiar, at least with the shape of the graph and how to put it in the calculator. And maybe some of the math will come back to you over the course of this year. So this is all uh, an important big picture, those seven things that we're going to remix, but you need to know what a function is, first of all, for us to be able to be talking about uh, different kinds of functions. So as a sort of intro into that topic, how many answers uh, do some questions have? So think about when you ask different kinds of questions, what uh, sort of, what number of answer do you expect? When you ask your uh, calculator a certain question, you will always expect one answer. That's how calculators work. There are some other kinds of questions that you might ask, not of a calculator, but of another human being. You might ask somebody, how old are you? And if they said 16 and 34, you would be really weirded out. You just expect one answer to a question like that. Where are you from? I remember, so my dad was in the military and then the embassy uh, as I grew up. I lived all over the place. People would ask me, where are you from? I was kind of a weirdo for not being able to give just one answer. This is something that people expect you to say one thing. Even though most people move today, you're sort of expected to settle on one and just answer with one. 
What's your favorite movie? Well, a lot of times people, it, it's very frustrating when you ask somebody that question to sort of get to know their personality, and they say, well, I like this one and that one, and oh, I don't even know how to answer that because I like so many. So you end up having to narrow your question down. You might want to ask in a few years, who should I marry? Expecting there to be one person who is right for you and you need to find them out of the four and a half billion people on the planet with the opposite gender of you. That's not necessarily the case, that there's just one person that it's right for you to marry. Once you are married, there's only one person who's right for you. But until then, there are multiple answers to that question. A function is something that has only one output per input. That is a fundamental definition that you need to take with you to the test in uh, a few weeks, that the, the fundamental definition of a function, I'm going to write that down, a function has one output per input. Now normally, as we think about a graph or something, that means one y per x. Something that doesn't follow this rule, but just is a general set of x's and y's that go together is simply a relation. A relation is a broader category than function. So you can think about maybe a Venn diagram where we talk about functions and relations. Every function is a relation, not every relation is a function. These are just ones that have ordered pairs within them. Now you're used to seeing ordered pairs, you're maybe not used to it being called that, but when we have x and y, like 2 and negative 2 and negative 3, uh, those are examples of ordered pairs, where you've got input paired with output, with independent variable paired with dependent variable. That's an example of an ordered pair. Um, also, another vocabulary word that you should have had a lot of in the past, but that you are formally responsible for now, is intercept. Um, if we have a graph that goes through the uh, y-axis and the x-axis, well, these spots right here and here are our x-intercepts, and over there I see a y-intercept. So there are two kinds of intercepts. If we were doing 3D, there'd be more, but in two dimensions, there are two kinds of intercepts. Where do we have the uh, axes run into? And you can know something about these points. I didn't label this very well, but you should already be able to know that for that point right there, the X is something mysterious, call it X sub 1, but the Y must be 0. Over here, we've got another unknown X, but again, the Y must be 0 here. Uh, we don't know what the y is, but we know that the x must be 0. These are the useful features of why we care about intercepts. Um, the next thing for us to make sure that we know, and now this is something you think you know, but you got to be careful, is the entire idea of function notation. Function notation is this really weird accident of history that we write it the same way we write multiplication. That we, we usually think of, of this as the quantity A times the quantity B plus 1, which is, of course, AB plus A. But in that same sort of style, with parentheses, we have this function notation, where we write uh, x squared plus x plus 1 is the function. And we mean there exists some function f. If, if, if I could go back in time and come up with another way, this isn't necessarily what I would actually go with, but the idea of saying there is some black box, some uh, mystery thing that we don't know how the inside of it works, but when we send in an x, out comes whatever we sent in times itself plus whatever we sent in plus 1 that this idea that the function here is some magical process that we've decided to name it f, and it takes an argument and then it does the function to it. 
So we're going to say that this is the independent variable. We're going to map the output of it to the dependent variable. And we're typically going to graph the x's left and right and the, the y's up and down. But this fundamental idea that there are functions that have an input and an output uh, that they are named. Functions are then named, and then we write it in this very odd way that looks like multiplication. You gotta get this separate in your mind. There's multiplication and there's function notation, and they may look the same, but they are night and day different. They, this is not, 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 not f times x. Okay, so, so you, you, you got to watch out for that, that this is the name of the function, and this is an example of the argument about the input, about what it takes. Not being multiplied, one is being fed into the other, and then they're showing you over on the right side what happens to that example input. We could think about, you know, of course, taking 3 and putting it in, and this F mysterious box takes whatever you give it, squares it, adds it again, and adds 1. So that's 9 plus 3 is 12, uh, plus 1 is 13. So when you put in 3, F of 3 equals 13. This is the name of the function, this is the input, the argument, and this is the output. So I can't stress enough, don't think that this is multiplication. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. Okay? So look at these uh, four functions over here, uh, these, excuse me, these four relations over here. Which of them are functions? Is this circle up here, is this a function? Why or why not? So if I look here at x equals 3, I've got y equals 1 and y equals 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are two y's per 1x. It's a relation, not a function. What about this uh, plateau thing over here? Yeah, it's a function. Each x has one and only one y. Same thing for this parabola. This parabola has got one y per x, so it's a function. But over here, sideways parabola, multiple y's per x. Mm -mm. Not a function, simply a relation. Okay, so one of the things that you're going to need to do with uh, this section is you're going to need to put in some functions in your calculator and be able to uh, look at them. We're not going to be able to have Skyrim, that would be awesome, but uh, we are going to have weird functions with limited domain. So this may not be something, it's probably not something that you've ever done with a calculator before. So you can see here, uh, given the example that I have there, I've got a parabola with a limited domain. I've only graphed part of a parabola. How have I done that? What I've done, and let me move in close here, is I've put in my function in parentheses. So you can see how my negative x squared minus 8x minus 10 is in parentheses. And then I've divided, of all weird things, I've divided by this limited domain. Look at that. Isn't that weird? Again, it's in parentheses. There's parentheses around that whole domain. And you might be wondering, where can I get a less than or equal to and the word and? So if you press second uh, math, then there's that word test right there. This is where we can see all of these cool uh, test operations, less than, greater than, uh, or equal to. And then if you move over to logic, there's our words uh, and and or. So this is something that you need to be able to do Practice doing it. Pause the video and take this function, negative x squared minus 8x minus 10, and try yourself to put it in with a limited domain. Try restraining what x can be. This is those vocabulary words from the last lecture, domain, uh, that those kind of ideas here with y equals, you need to be able to practice putting in limited domain. Okay? Now, these 
seven basic functions, these seven parent functions that we remix, we need to make sure that we've got a working knowledge of a few of them. Some of them, you don't, you don't need to be experts on any of them right now, but we just need to be able to uh, pull them up and have some, some basic knowledge. Now, when we talk about lines, the adjective form is linear. There are three ways that linear information, linear functions might come at you. They might give you a bunch of numerical data uh, where they say this x goes to this y, this x goes to that y, on and on down a list. Uh, they might uh, give that to you in a table where you would then have to probably construct the equation of the line uh, yourself, putting it into y equals mx plus b. Some skills that you already know about slope is rise over run, b is the, x, the y-intercept, stuff like that. Um, and they might also give you y equals mx plus b, the sort of standard form of that equation. Uh, another kind of uh, parent function that you should be moderately used to is called the power function. This is where we have some multiple of x to some power. Uh, we usually call those a and b, but um, that you don't often just encounter just one plain power function, but a string of power functions that have been added together is a polynomial. And these polynomials tend to have uh, some names that we need to be able to use when we talk about these functions. When we look at the uh, x with the highest exponent, that's where we can name polynomials based off of the highest degree, the highest exponent. When that exponent is a 2, it's called a quadratic. When that uh, exponent is a 3, it's called a cubic equation which does not look exactly the same. It's not got the awesome symmetry that a uh, quadratic has. It's a, the mirror image slightly different way. Also, we have a name for when uh, the, fourth the exponent is a 4. That's called a quartic equation. And just bonus, you don't need to know this, something to the fifth degree is called a quintic. So a little extra for you there. Rational functions are when we have a polynomial divided by another polynomial. This is our, these are kinds of things that we see actually a lot in the real world. They take the form where some, some rational function is equal to another function over a third function, but that bottom function can't be zero. That's the definition of polynomials. We will get to polynomials at the end of the year in chapter 15. But just broadly speaking, what are they? If you need a simple, simple example of one, simplest function to have on top is 1. Simplest function to have on the bottom is x. y equals 1 over x is the simplest rational function. Periodic functions are not something that you've had a lot of in the past. You maybe have been broadly introduced to sine and cosine. Know where to find them on the calculator. But we've probably not done a lot with the graph. You don't need to know a whole lot right now, but the, as the name implies, they're periodic. They happen over and over and over again in a given interval of time. That's what the name should suggest. So you could have some square ones. You could have some lumpy ones with the bottom lumps cut off. All kinds of interesting things can happen periodically. Exponential, exponent uh, equation, equations are, are hard to keep straight from power in a lot of people's minds. So the, the little thing to say to yourself, the mantra you might use, is that x is in the exponent, making it exponential. When x is in the exponent, it's an exponential function, versus when x has a power, that's a power function. Something I use to keep them straight. Uh, interesting things to note about this graph, what happens to any, like 10 to the x, 3 to the x, 2 to the x, what happens to any of these when we plug in 0? Well, for x, anything to the 0 is 1. So they all going to go through that point. And then when we try to make them as small as possible, plugging in negative x values of bigger and bigger size, larger and larger negative numbers, we still can never quite make it to 0. We can get down pretty low, but we can never make it all the way down to 0. There are some names, additionally, for when we have a power function with a fractional exponent. The two that you're responsible for are uh, when the exponent is 1 half. That's called a square root, something you've seen 
a fair bit of. And when uh, the uh, exponent is one third, that's a cubic root. Now, square roots are strange in that the left half doesn't exist. Square roots of negative numbers are imaginary, which we're not dealing with. But cubic uh, functions are much more symmetrical. You can take the cube root of a negative number, the cube root of negative 8, what times itself 3 times equals negative 8, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 equals negative 8. So the left half exists for the cube root for odd powers, uh, but it does not exist for even powers for the square root. Logarithms, nothing to do with logs, just uh, the inverse of exponential, where we, we have a log with a base. If we don't write a base, then it's base uh, 10. There's also ln. All things you should have seen before, they look a lot like exponential, but turned on its side. So the homework for you to do is from the textbook in section 1.2, which is on page 12 and 14, I would like for you to do 1 and 2. Now, I recognize that these have sections A through D. So this is, in a certain sense, eight problems. But it should go fairly quickly. You will need that calculator skill. So rewind in the video if you didn't catch how to graph limited domain. If you don't know how to look at the table or how to uh, plug in x values and find the y value at a certain uh, x, you need to go back and watch the supplementary video that I made from section 1.1 on how to use the table feature of your calculator. You will need to be able to find uh, the domain. Well, the domain has been given to you. You will need to use that to say, where's the highest y value and the lowest y value? That's the range. Uh, you will need to name what kind of function it is. And you will need to try to think about a situation where this could come up in the real world. In class, we will do 3 through 36, the threes, which is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, et cetera. But for your homework, please do 1 through 2, A and D. If you are not able to remember the names, I went pretty quickly through all these different kinds of functions. These are in your book on page 9 and 10, the different kinds of functions, which you will need to be able to use those names in class when we go through the different kinds of functions. So, went through it pretty quick. Feel free to watch this video more than once, but do come to class with problems 1 and 2, A through D, done the next time I see you. Have a great day.